Hey guys, Artemon here. So uh, to c kind of explain, yes, I was the one who drew the ukulele and JonTron image that you see before you. If anyone is wondering or wanting to see the full image, here you go. Yeah. Um, to kind of explain my side of the story as to why I drew that picture. Um, so I heard about the whole JonTron ukulele thing, how JonTron got fired. So I was bored, and I guess I wanted to draw something somewhat topical. I drew that. And, uh, yeah. Everyone is obviously going to be pissed off at either Platonic, or there are people that are going to just be mocking and talking down to those that are just obviously pissed off. I mean, I'm obviously on the side that's upset with Platonic, but you know what? I At the same time, I back the game, too. I support JonTron, but I'm going to still play the game because I've wanted a game that was like Banjo-Kazooie for a while. At least kind of like Banjo-3. And honestly, I think it's really unfair for this whole drama thing to kind of like hinder a game's ability to succeed, especially when they come from... This game comes from, like, developers that worked on Banjo-Kazooie, the original games that the, this whole thing is based on. And the ironic thing is, is that, basically, <laughs> it's just, the ironic thing about it is that the people that they... They're trying to basically cater this to, obviously don't like it. But I'm going to get into that for a little bit. So, um, yeah, to kind of explain this whole drawing thing, I drew JonTron fucking ukulele because I thought that drawing was funny. I thought it was a funny idea to basically have John and ukulele basically fuck instead of having them either battle it out or some stupid shit that's not really going to be, well, that'll either be considered cringy or, or retarded or something like that. I don't want to have the idea of them fighting because that's obviously not what's going on. JonTron obviously is more accepting of them basically taking him out of the game. He's like, you know what? It's cool. But that's aside at the point. Um, yeah. So I decided to post that on Twitter to see if I can get any attention with that. I posted it on my Tumblr, um, my Weasel, my Fur Affinity, my So Furry. Um, I posted it on E621. Oh, by the way, I'm a furry. But anyway, I also posted it on rule34.beheel.net. And, um, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, there you go. I mean, that's... So I guess I wanted to get more attention from that drawing. So to basically get, get more attention from that drawing, I decided to basically say, you know what? Let me try to tweet this at somebody who may probably find this hilarious. I retweeted it, tagged Shadman, and he retweeted it. And thanks to him, now it stands at about over 40 different retweets. I don't know how many replies that thing has. People were tagging their friends. People were tweeting it at me and, and Shadman. And it has almost 400 likes now on Twitter. So, all this is within the course of two weeks, too, or a week. God, I don't know, I can't remember when I actually drew that image, but it was funny nonetheless. And then I posted it on E621. A lot of people were arguing on that thing, because, you know, drama. Posted it on Rule 34. And they were wanting to get that image featured, but I don't think it'll get featured quite yet. Not until I get the game comes out, I probably. If it does get featured, then I'm going to laugh my ass off. So, um, yeah. There's that. And then I find out from a friend that because of the attention that it's been getting on, probably on Twitter, I guess. I don't know where the attention is coming from, either Twitter or or probably a E621. <laughs> it's on Encyclopedia Dramatica, on the ukulele page. I, 
I'm a part of Encyclopedia Dramatica. You want to know why that's funny to me? It's funny because over the last nine years that I've been aware of ED, I never thought that in my days I would ever see anything made by me on ED. And somehow I got noticed on there. That's funny. Then, okay, then I find out that it's been shared on V, on, on 4chan. Internet, I love you. So, there's no telling where that image is going to be shared. I mean, I tagged John Tron in that image, and I, he still has yet to even notice it. If he hasn't already, with the amount of notifications he's probably gotten, he probably noticed it, and he probably just muted it, and he probably has me ignored. So, um, that aside, what do I think about this whole JonTron drama and ukulele? Now, without getting too much into what he said, and just to try to shorten it up a bit, I actually stand with JonTron, in which I say, as much as I admire his admiration and his decision to basically be more mature about it and not, you know, make a hussy fut, hussy fit, hissy fit, a fuss, just a fuss about this whole thing. I'm going to say that, yeah, it does kind of suck that he got taken out of the game. I'm a bit upset, though there could be a chance he may still be in it. They say it's a day one patch, but I don't know. I mean, if it's on Steam, I could easily use an older version where he's still, his voice is still used in the game. There's obviously going to be mods that are going to basically find a way to get his voice back in the game. There's going to be a bunch of shit. I mean, especially if it's on PC. It's going to be on Steam, too. So, obviously, if it's going to be, like, pirated and it's going to be shared, it's obviously going to have something where, like, the voice is still going to be in it. Just... The fact that JonTron was actually in you It was kind of confirmed years ago, where people were asking him... Where Platonic said, yeah, you know what, you want to be in John in ukulele? They were like, yeah. A lot of people apparently didn't know, but I knew years ago, when the game was first uh, being promoted. And they were saying that he could be like a microphone that has eyes on it. Which, knowing how uh, most rare games generally are, that makes a lot of sense. But just the fact that just John Tron was going to be in this game. It was kind of like a perfect blend that to have one of my favorite YouTubers be in the game that's the spiritual successor to one of the games that I really admired as a kid and I kind of admire even more growing up. Just it's amazing that it was gonna be it was gonna be great, but unfortunately, the drama ensued. Neo Gaff kind of came in and ruined things. Thanks a lot, Neo Gaff. Hey, uh, if somebody wants to do me a favor, post that drawing on Neo Gaff and see uh, how many how much reactions it gets. I want to see I want to see that shit be spread all over the internet, just like the the common like the common cold. Excuse me. I think it's a bit unfair for people to basically get taken out of a project because of their political opinion. And people were people are saying, oh, he said something that was racist when it kind of wasn't. 
especially when you compare it to what somebody that that one guy was saying at that was working on Mass Effect Andromeda, and yet he still managed to keep his job. So, and they were just trying to. They basically were doing this to appease to people or appeal to people that obviously aren't going to like the game. Especially Kotaku, people like Jim Sterling, and Polygon, which that's the main thing I want to talk about. So Polygon basically gave the game a 5.5 out of 10. Jim Sterling gave it a 2 out of 10, which... I mean, honestly, I've never really watched Jim Sterling, but from what I hear, he's a bit of a, a faggot. Considering he apparently gave, like, Breath of the Wild a 7 out of 10, mainly because he had issues with the fact that the weapons broke in that game, and yet apparently he gave Fallout 4 a 10 out of 10, I think, or a 9 out of 10. He gave it a better score than uh, Legend of Zelda, which... Okay, this is coming from somebody who's never played Fallout 4, but I, if I'm not... If weapons... If, did weapons break in Fallout 4, and Jim Sterling didn't mind that in Fallout 4 compared to Breath of the Wild, where he did mind it, then I guess that makes some sense. Which, yeah, that's kind of dumb for you to basically give a game that has a flaw that another game has a 9 out of 10 while you give the other game a 7 out of 10. Just saying... If that is the case. But just... I've never really liked Jim Sterling, honestly. And he always has come off as a bit of a smug cunt. And, uh... Yeah. Then you have... Kotaku, from what I heard, they didn't even play most of the game. They only stopped, like, what, halfway... Or they barely played the game mu by much, from what I understood. And they didn't give it a fair review until, like... I don't know, like... They were saying that the game was too bloated or whatnot. Then again, most of the reviews for that game are just stemming from, oh, it, it plays too much like old-school games, or like the, the controls and whatnot feel too outdated when... Uh, hello? Did you play Banjo-Kazooie? Did you play, play Banjo-Tooie? You do realize that it's basically a callback to those games, pretty much. That's the point. It still kind of has, like... like Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie obviously were, like, games that obviously aren't very up-to-date. They don't... I mean, the camera in those games were somewhat difficult to kind of manu like, like manually like deal with. <clears throat> Especially in the water levels, in some cases. Like, go back to playing Banjo-Kazooie. It, sometimes it gets kind of frustrating trying to get through certain portions of the game. I'm not saying that it's a bad game entirely, but it does have frustrating points. Rusty Bucket Bay is one of them. And yeah, the camera can be very frustrating at times, too. But... That was also kind of to make it challenging as well. But the thing is... Giving ukulele shit for basically being outdated... Or being... Like, too old school when... That's the point. It was a point to basically be similar to those old 3D platformers. And not to mention... Nine times out of ten, when it comes to companies like IGN and GameSpot... Which, no surprise, GameSpot gave it a six out of ten, I think... Whereas IGN gave it a 7 out of 10, I think, or something like that. See, people are basically going around saying, oh, this game's bad, when it's not bad. It, those reviews aren't bad. It's just that those games are given really mediocre reviews. Anyway, and it's like... The thing is, these people don't realize that... See, they're basically... The guys who review these games are people that don't even care about that genre... Or they don't even they don't even look at the game that or the audience that the a game is trying to basically cater to. I mean, hell, I could probably play Ukulele, and it could be one of the best games I've played in a long while. I may might as well enjoy it. I mean, fuck, I backed the game. Yeah, just to kind of let that sink let that sink in. The guy who drew porn 
of JonTron fucking ukulele. And basically is with, with John's side. Is back, had already backed the game when it first was announced. And is still wanting to play the game even with the whole JonTron dra drama. Despite being on John's side. Alright? I even think it was kind of dumb for them to try to boycott this game. Or try to get this game refunded too. Because... First of all, and the game's already probably been funded, it's getting close to release anyway. To call, get back uh, like a refund over, like, when it's already been two years too late. And, I don't know, man, just... <laughs> There's no telling what the release of this game is going to be like. It's, if it's going to be a disaster, if it's going to be... Hopefully, and I'm hoping... To God, it does not end up like Mighty Number no. Nine, where I did not back that game, and I'm happy I didn't because that game was a disaster as is. Especially when you also try to back for the the Vita and 3DS release, and those those the this the release for those systems have not yet been announced. Yeah. Oh. It seems like Kickstarter games that are basically being made by AAA developers seem to go downhill very fast. And there's even that Castlevania spiritual successor, too. You know... It's kind of sad that Kickstarter games are now being looked down upon because of these blunders. I mean, yeah, we've had that incident where it was basically like... The potato salad thing. Just the potato salad thing, It's that, that whole thing kind of speaks for itself. I mean, we've had games like Shantae. We've had games like Undertale and Lisa that have actually been successful Kickstarters. I mean, regardless of what you think of... I mean, let's look at it this way. Undertale, although it was overhyped, was still kind of... It's still a pretty good game for what it is. Least is a really fantastic game, and that was unfortunately underlooked. But at the same time, I'm kind of happy that Dunkey played that game recently, and that game is going to be getting a lot of attention thanks to Dunkey himself. Because that game itself is just... It's just sad to know that that game is... was underlooked. But that's aside the point. But like Shantae, Lisa, and Undertale, games that I think are pretty good, were Kickstarter games that were actually successful. And the fact that pretty much... Now, Kickstarter has become the thing where it's like... I don't know what to say, man. I mean, now we have to wait for Toe Jam and Earl 3, or Return to Funko Tron. We have to wait for that Shenmue 3 game to come out. Just... It saddens me. That... Honestly... If Ukulele does turn out to be a bad game, and these reviews are true, then... I don't know. For all we know, it could be the best game ever, and I'm probably worrying over nothing. It's obviously going to be a game that's pretty damn good. You never know. Anyway, I think that's all i got to say for right now. Y'all have a good one. Later.